Hey Eurovision fam, it's Alicia Michelle. I am excited today because I am gonna be sharing with you my top 10 for now. Eurovision 2024. <laughs> I got a new video. I got a new video. Alicia Michelle. Hey girl. I'm ready to go. How you feeling? Eurovision fam. Yeah. Are you ready for the show? Hey, if you've never been to my channel before, welcome. If you love the Eurovision Song Contest, I think you will love my channel. So take this opportunity right now to like this video and please do subscribe. Now disclaimer, before we get into this video, there are three really important things that I think you should keep in mind. <laughs> First up, this is not a prediction video. These are just the 10 songs from Eurovision 2024 that I am listening to and loving a lot, a lot, a lot right now. So this is just my personal top 10. Number two, I think it's really important to keep in mind that I said this is my top 10 for now. I am gonna be locking in a top 10 prior to the rehearsals when we get a little bit closer to the song contest all going down in Malmö, Sweden. So. Don't take this with too much weight. This is just where I'm at for now. Three, one of the things that I hold really, really dear at my channel is we do not have to agree. So me sharing my top 10 with you is simply that. It's me sharing what I am loving a lot right now and this ranking that I have put together and I will say put together really, really uh, difficult. <laughs> like this has been probably the hardest top 10 that I have ever had to do. And some people might say, oh, Alicia, you say that every year. I don't think it was this hard last year. I I'm gonna be real. Like it was not this hard last year. 2022, I think it was a little bit tricky for me. 2016, I did it somehow. And it was really difficult for me to do it. This year, I am telling you on my ESC Faves playlist, I've got 22 songs. There are 22 songs out of this year's 37 songs that I am loving and I'm like, okay, I need to have them on their own playlist in sort of my own order that I'm putting together. I might share that playlist with you. I have done it before in the past, but I'm like, that's a lot of songs. And so then for me to go in my faves and basically cut it in half, that was really difficult, okay? That was really, really hard. Principally, love what you love, like what you like, hate what you hate, but you don't need to be going out here, you know, talking to other people and convincing them to think the same way that you do. That's not what I'm doing here. I am just sharing my top 10 for now. With this ranking, I'm probably judging 50% studio cut, 30% live performance, and then I would say 20% of that is the je ne sais quoi, my personal taste, things like that. Kicking off in 10th position for me, it might be a surprise for some of you all, but it was Australia. I am loving what Australia is giving this year. I'm sorry, y'all. Like, I know some of y'all think that Australia might not qualify. And like I said, this top 10 is not a prediction. I am not saying that this is gonna be the top 10 at Eurovision, but I am saying right now in my car, Australia is a top 10 track. I'm loving the song. When it comes on, I'm singing along. And y'all know, I'm not really a message song girl. And this is, you know, a message song, but it's a message song that is doing something different. It doesn't feel completely run of the mill, but it still has that anthemic sing along with us quality that a message song really has to possess. So Australia, you're my number 10. Armenia is my number nine. Look y'all. I will say Armenia is benefiting ever so slightly from the fact that it was one of the later songs that we had. I don't know if I would have it in my top 10 if we had gotten this song in January, because I will say there's some songs that I was bumping, that I am bumping, that I love, that we got a little bit earlier that aren't gonna make their way into this top 10 list. And I think it's, it's just sometimes there is an advantage because Sometimes I will skip the songs that I've listened to to death just to get to the new stuff. And I will say I am guilty of skipping some of the songs that I love to get to Armenia's song because it's upbeat, it's joyful. I will say I could see Armenia leaving my top 10 list and I'll tell you why. I wish that there was more lyrical content to the song. If we're judging the Eurovision Song Contest and we have a really strong year, which I am saying, this is a strong year. It's a strong year. We made it, y'all. We deserve it. 
We should relish in it. It's exciting. This is a strong year. In a strong year, we're going to have to start getting kind of picky about, you know, what allows a song to advance and what doesn't. I love Armenia's song. I think that it should be in the grand final. But like, if you're talking about what I want to see Armenia win this year, I could probably say maybe not because I think that there are some songs with a little bit more lyrical depth. But I am still loving the track. I am still singing along to it. I want to figure out all the correct pronunciation of these words because I'm just loving the song. Next up is the UK. Come on, United Kingdom. Come on, Ollie Alexander. Come on, all y'all haters who feel like the UK is coming 20th. This song, when you are listening to it on the playlist, it stands out. It stands out. And I know some people are allergic to pop perfection. I know, I know it's really, really hard when we're at the Eurovision Song Contest and we can listen to all of these songs that are totally out of the box. But here's the thing. If someone is giving you pop perfection, and it is, in fact, perfection and just crafted really, really well, and you feel like it might be executed well, then you got to give it its props. And I'm sorry, the UK, I'm giving you the props. Dizzy is just a great track. It feels current. It feels fresh. I think I'm living in a little bit of like a queer quartet world this year at Eurovision because I will say our girls are giving us some pop perfection too. But I will say the queers are coming through and I'm sorry, I'm just marinating in the community. I'm marinating in the community a little bit this year. I, I feel spoiled for choice. Is that is that the phrase? Spoiled for choice? You know, there's so many options I have to pick from. And I will say, of some of the pop perfection we are getting this year, this song just stands out. And I'm just feeling it. So thank you, the UK, you're in there. Next up, another pop perfection song. But let me say, electro pop, it's Lithuania. Lithuania is in my top 10 this year, okay? Lithuania song, it was one of the first songs to me that we got this year that just felt executed to perfection. In sixth position, I have Norway. Norway had to be in this list, y'all. This song has stuck with me through thick and thin. I am telling you, I never, ever skip this song. Even if there is a new song coming after it, I can't skip it. I love Norway's song this year. And, and I think it's going to be executed well on the stage. Ultimately, I don't know how Europe is going to take this, but a lot of y'all like kind of want to have like winner potential conversations about Norway. And I'm like, okay, I okay. Because I would be here for this winning. I would completely be here for this winning. There's something about it that is, it's mystical. It feels like Norway without feeling too gimmicky, but there's still something about it that's so unique that people can latch onto in a real way. I am loving what Norway's giving. Y'all gotta check out one of my Eurovision mashups because I did do a Eurovision mashup with this song as the background and it is completely unhinged in the best way. Okay, we're at the halfway mark. And so of course, at this point, I wanna give some love to my honorable mentions, because I will say there are three songs not on this list that I'm having a hard time processing that are not on this list. And I'll just get into them real quickly because I, I will say this was a really hard list to make. And the reason why I ended up cutting these three songs, even though there's a whole bunch of other songs, remember my EC Faves playlist is 22 songs this year. But these three songs I really, really do like but there's like environmental factors that are affecting me from listening to them. There are times where I have to take into account that I have found myself skipping them to get to some of the newer tracks. So I have to be, you know, fair. Like I maybe have passed these by every so often and it hurts me because I like these songs and I really do want to see them. And I, I think I said at the beginning with like Armenia's entry, I could see Armenia coming out of my top 10. I could even see Australia's song coming out of my top 10. And if they come out, it's going to be one of these three songs that potentially fill the space. Italy, Ireland, and Serbia. Serbia's song, I love. I have been on record saying Romanda is actually like my grower. This year, when I first heard it, I liked it. But I am now in a place where I love it. But it didn't come to me immediate. I had to sort of sit with that song. I had to marinate with it. I had to give it maybe like two or three listens before I was like, ooh. Ooh, this is really beautiful. Like, it hit me immediate in that, yes, I could recognize it was a good song, 
but it didn't hit me immediate like this is a song that you need to fall in love with. And I do wonder if that will hurt Serbia's chances a little bit at Eurovision this year. I think it's going to advance. Don't get me wrong. I think there are some people thinking it won't advance. I think that this song is definitely going to advance, but I am curious how people relate to it because I also will say I didn't see it with, you know, obviously the live performance. I was just listening to the studio cut. So I do wonder if my first impression was that live performance, if I would have been more immediately attached to the song. So I will give Serbia that credit. But again, it's still one of my favorite songs this year. Ireland, y'all know I've been rocking with Bambi hard. I've been rocking with Bambi hard, but I will say lately I have had to skip the song to make space for myself to give some other tracks a chance. You know, we got Ireland songs real early. Y'all know from first listen, Ireland had me. Like, and and from first listen, Bambi's track had me. I was like, no, I'm in. So this is one of the songs that I love. It's not in my top 10 for now, but I do see a world where it comes back into that space. And I'm particularly kind of holding out once we start seeing the rehearsals, I think my like week of top 10 I, I just, I don't see a world where Ireland's probably not there for me. I just don't think I'm going to get that. But we will see. And Italy, I have talked about this song. I love this song. Here's the thing. It's cold where I am. And when I listen to this song in the car with the sweater and the heat on and it being cold outside, it feels like the song is taunting me. Okay, it feels like the song is telling me, girl, don't you wish you were out here dipping and doing it with an Aperol spritz, like walking by the beach with warm weather in flip flops. That's what the song is giving me. So when it is cold outside, I really can't listen to it. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> so I know that I will feel differently about Italy's song in a couple of months. Just give me a couple of months and an Aperol spritz and warm weather, and this song, I am telling you, is going to be firmly etched back into my top 10. It's just a good quality song, and it feels really current, and I do think it's gonna be executed well by Angelina, period. All right, let's get into the top five. In fifth position is Croatia. Now, some of y'all might go, Alicia, Croatia, fifth position? But don't you wanna see them win? Yes. <laughs> yes. But this is about my personal top 10 and kind of what I am bumping to in the car. I love this song. Again, we're talking about a strong year. This was a really hard top 10. Calls had to be made. Tough decisions had to be made. But no, Croatia's song is good. I think once we get this on the stage in Malma, I think it's really going to win over some of the naysayers. I don't know, lately I feel like I've been seeing people online talking poorly about the song and I am confused. This is a regular like metal song. I've heard people talking about his vocal. I'm like, this is a metal song. This is not an operatic like choir boy piece. This is not pop perfection. What notes are you expecting him to hit? And if, it, if the answer is the notes on the page, well, guess what he is? <laughs> like he is, this song is gonna be executed well. I love that the song feels Croatian and it feels like something people in the Balkans can kind of latch onto and relate to without it feeling cliche. And I do feel like there's something about this that has a wink and a sense of humor to it. But I think with Baby Lasagna, there's something really endearing about him as a performer. So I am loving this track. Croatia, you're my number five. Do I want to see you win Eurovision this year? Short answer, yeah, I'd be here for it, okay? In fourth position, y'all. Europe, let's all together. Europe, Papa. Europapa, welcome in Europa. Come on, y'all. It's Europapa. I love this song so much. I am upset that I love this song so much. It's one of those, y'all. It's one of those that I am like, I don't have to love this song. I know I don't, but I do. Y'all need to prepare yourselves because the Netherlands has never really fumbled with staging and some people will be like, they'll use last year as an example or they have to go all the way back to walk along, walk along. That was a long time ago. We can't use walk along as an example. And last year, the staging was beautiful. It was the song and the execution and the vocal choices made for that execution. It shouldn't have been a duet. It should have been a solo with our girl um, Mia, right? That's what should have happened last year. It shouldn't have even been a duet from Jump. Those were the mistakes that were made. The Netherlands isn't making that mistake this year. <clears throat> 
this is going to be executed well. People are going to be feeling this song. This could be our televote winner. And I've told people, I'm like, y'all, I could do the math where I could see the Netherlands winning. I'm like, y'all want to go back this soon? I'm living in the world where no, I don't want to go back because I couldn't afford it the first time and inflation is real and I probably definitely won't be able to afford it a second time around. <laughs> And yes, I am making selfish Eurovision decisions over here because this is my top 10 for now. So I'm allowed to make these selfish decisions for now because it's my top 10. So the Netherlands, yeah, this song, I don't, I, it's like almost one of those things where I don't know why I love it so much, but I can explain it. I love the gabber portion of the song. I love the fact that it is winking to like the Euro pop of the 90s and everything that I hold so dear and love and still listen to to this day so it's winking to it it isn't doing it in a way that feels dated it's taking a fresh spin on it I love the fact that we're getting a mix of languages that this isn't like all in English because that's not what I come to Eurovision for and there's something about it that feels Dutch again without it feeling like cliche if there's something about this that feels like yeah this is from the Netherlands. And that's sort of one of those je ne sais quoi things that you want to do at Eurovision if you can. And so the Netherlands is doing it. I'm happy it's happening. We're here for it. Number three, I won't say a lot about this because I've already said a lot. Ukraine is my number three. I love this song. I think a lot of people are forgetting how immediate this song was in the fandom. And here's the thing. Everybody else who's going to be watching and the majority of people who are going to be voting, they're going to have that immediate experience when they hear Ukraine's song. It's going to be immediate for them. They're going to latch on to it. I know some people are nervous about like the hip hop elements of that. But guess what? Kalush had that too. And I argue that Alona Alona is actually doing it better. My number two, y'all. So my number two and my number one. Here we go. In number one, I've got Switzerland. The code. I never, ever skip it. I love it. Number two is Greece. Y'all, I was having a hard time trying to figure out how I wanted to rank these two. I was like, in some ways, Greece could be my number one. In some ways, Switzerland could be my number two at times. It kind of depends upon the mood, but I will say both of these songs are like in a virtual number one tie. In my car and on my playlist, Marina Sakti, girl, if you, if you mess up this staging, I will never forgive you. <laughs> I will never, ever forgive you because I love this song so so much and i have seen the post online where everyone's just like oh everyone's just over hyping greece and i'm like so what maybe some of us are because ta 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 i am feeling that song so heavy that is a song that i can play in my car that i know people in the states who know nothing about eurovision will be like oh what's this and they will be feeling it I'm telling you, Switzerland for me is just like the full package. Switzerland's song is risky. It's ambitious. On paper, there's a lot of things about it that shouldn't work, but they do work. And I think it will all come together. I have a lot of faith that, this, that Switzerland is going to stage this well. I would not hate it if Switzerland won. Obviously, I would not hate it if Greece won. I just feel like... Greece and Switzerland are both playing risk really, really well. They're both playing something that's just like take it or leave it. And I love kind of the unabashed confidence of like, yeah, there are going to be some people who don't like this and we don't care. We're trying to hit the 15% who are going to love it. And I just happen to be in the 15% that's loving it. I expect Switzerland to come up in the odds a little bit. I know a lot of people are talking about France winning the jury. I think I've gone on record saying that I think Switzerland has a really large chance to cakewalk the jury over France. I really, really do. I could be living in a world of delusion. Okay. But I do think that juries do reward vocal moments, wonderful staging, and ambition in a song. And I will say... France has vocal moments, but I don't know how that staging is going to be. I don't know if it's going to be that inventive. And let's just be clear. France's song, no shade to it, but it is simple. It is not a risky entry. Switzerland, this is a risky entry. Like I said, there's a lot of things on paper about Switzerland's song that shouldn't work, but somehow it does. Greece, I think the same thing. And also, y'all, 
I want to go to Greece. I want to go to Greece. I just want to say that. So like if we want to coalesce and give Greece a win, I will be here for it. Okay. There's a lot of countries I'm down to see win this year. I just wanted to be clear that Switzerland and Greece are two countries that I would be here for. And I know Switzerland is expensive, but I would just be hoping that it's happening in Geneva so I could stay with my cousin. All right, well, that was my top 10 for now. What do you think? Drop down, talk to me in the comments below. Do we have some similar things in our top 10? Do I have some things in my top 10 that you're like, whoa, I didn't expect to see you have that in your top 10? Drop down, talk to me in the comments below. This is a conversation, you know it. I am so excited for Eurovision 2024. Don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. I most certainly do have lots of content coming for you. I've got a whole bunch of live streams planned. Check out the playlist. Go to my actual channel page. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of those live conversations. And also, if you are traveling to Malmö or Copenhagen for Eurovision 2024, you're trying to figure out what to do for fun, check out some of my events that I'm doing on the ground. I'm also running a contest on Instagram so you can get tickets to the Euro Glam viewing space. It's gonna be right by Euro Village this year in Malma. So much stuff for you. I'm telling you, Eurovision 2024 is gonna be great. This is our contest. This is our community. Let's celebrate with each other.